ഹബീബിക്കാ <tos> اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وسلم عليه most honorable respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته last time we finished with the story of نوح عليه السلام and how the people they disbelieved in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and turned away from accepting the risalah the message of نوح عليه السلام so Allah سبحانه وتعالى due to this he sends them the punishment of the flood and of course we know that nuh alayhi salam he boarded the ship with three of his children knowing that nuh alayhi salam had four children and one of them rejected and he was then destroyed in the flood as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in the quran al karim and these three sons they are called sam yam and hafiz and from the children of Th- of sam uh, comes the lineage of the arabs and from these arabs who then uh, are within the uh, arab vicinity arab area comes the tribe which has been mentioned uh, in the quran al karim ad and these were the arab people which were then sent to the third messenger which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the quran al karim from the lineage of nuh alayhi salam from the lineage of nuh alayhi salam by the name of prophet hud alayhi salam and in regards to hud alayhi salam it's been mentioned in a hadith by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, from abi dhar and it's been mentioned in a long hadith about the messengers minhum arba'atu min al arab hud wa salih wa shu'ayb wa nabika ya abi dhar so from the arabs there were four four prophets there were four prophets who were arabs and they were hud alayhi salam salih alayhi salam shu'ayb alayhi salam and your prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's been mentioned in the commentary of this hadith you call who in hud alayhi salam awwal man takallam bil arabiya so hud alayhi salam he was from he was the first who spoke arabic he was the first man who spoke arabic so to begin with of course we know that hud alayhi salam he comes to uh, this tribe thamud so for this reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in the quran al karim and to hud we send their brother in we send their brother we send their brother and of course this is a common theme which we find amongst the prophets and the reason as to why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions brothers is because this uh, this prophet hud alayhi salam he was living from amongst them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent someone who was living from amongst them as a prophet to them so then because of their great honesty because of their great integrity they had no reason then to to not accept the claim of that prophet that claim of that person because they were never known to be liars so for this reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says and we sent to them their brother hud and it's been reported in regards to this tribe of uh, of ad that they were very large people very very muscular very great people and uh, at this time these people they were worshiping idols and these were from amongst the first people after the flood of uh, which took place in the time of nuh alayhi salam after this punishment that came who had, who had started accepting um, idols so for this reason allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sends hud alayhi salam to these people out and he says to them that you need to turn back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, know? you need to turn back and start accepting the tawhid of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he talks in the quran how he granted these guys these this tribe a great power a great special ability and this ability was for them to construct beautiful buildings fantastic buildings so much so that they would build palaces on top of mountains they would build high skyscraping towers on water 
this was the level of intellect they had the the, the capability of the uh, of their mind that they were able to forge such buildings and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he granted them this and it's because of this very same ability which Allah initially gave to them that they started becoming arrogant started having so much takabbur so much arrogance that they turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they had it all in terms of building in terms of raw power in terms of army in terms of respect but they did not accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so with this great belief that they had, this great arrogance that they possessed within them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends Hud alayhi salam to remind them. So with this in, as a picture in your mind, they were able to construct great buildings. They were able to construct great um, land. They had money, power. And this is similar to our world today. You'll find in places in the world today, whether it's places like China, uh, America, all these places, you will see a common theme. These build, these places, Tokyo, you will see that all of them are full with buildings which are high, which are built high, lofty buildings. And these, this sense of building and construction that they have going on gives them a fear, gives them a sense of superiority over the people. They feel arrogant, they feel that they are superior to the people. And we will come to know what happens to us. We come to know what will happen to, these tri to this tribe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, he tells Hud alayhi salam to begin to call them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begin to warn them. So he does that and he starts warning them, starts telling them, look, turn back to Allah, turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the first reason why they reject it, because they said to Hud alayhi salam, we don't want to accept you because then we are going to be equal to everyone else. And such takabur that they had, they didn't want to be equal to anyone else. And of course, the second thing, and you'll notice a common theme, a common theme. They would keep saying that the people who are following you are those who have got nothing. That's why they're following you. We've got so much to lose. We don't want to follow you. It's a common theme. Nuh salam, you will see in his life. You will see it also in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Those people who are following, they said they're only following you because they're poor. They want nothing to their name anyway. And the second reason why they were rejecting, they said to Hud alayhi salam that, if you're such a prophet and you've come from amongst us, you're a human like us, why, why, isn't, why aren't any of us prophets? Why didn't God choose me? Why didn't you choose him? And also, if it's so much that you're a prophet, why didn't God send angels walking on the earth? And they were prophets. Why didn't God send them as prophets? These were the ridiculous things they were saying to Hud salam. So, of course, the only thing that they would say to Hud salam is that how can we turn away from what we've been brought up with. How can we be, uh, turn away from what our forefathers used to believe in? And you see this also, you know, in, in, in the Asian uh, community, in the Asian culture, you know, those things which are uh, within the blood of the Asians, they, they don't let go of these things. They don't let go of these things. So they were saying that, how can we let go of those things which our forefathers gave, uh, give to us? And then, of course, they they continue with their goal. They were more reluctant, more rejecting of Nuh, of uh, Hud alayhi salam, constantly, constantly. So much so that even you see from the life of, of Nuh alayhi salam, when he says that after 950 years to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more I call them towards you, the further away they turn from me. And the more that I call to the ones who believe, the more that they believe in. And similarly, this was the case also in the life of Hud alayhi salam. The more he called to them, the, the further away they turned from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more he called to those who believed, the more they accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that it came to a point that one of the leaders, then he came to Hud alayhi salam saying to him that, Man akbara minna, man ashad al minna, who is stronger than us? Who is more powerful than us? So much arrogance that they possessed in their heart. So Hud alayhi salam, he challenges them now and he begins to say to them. And he and again bringing back... Uh, the Shahid and the Mashhud, which has been mentioned in Surah Buruj, where he says that today you are all my witnesses, and Allah is my witness, that I do not associate any partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I am calling you today to accept the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am the messenger. This was the first thing he said to them. So he, they, they were, were the Shahid. The people there present were the Shahid. Allah was the Shahid. He was, they were all the witnesses to that. And the Mashhud was the Kalam of Hud alayhi salam. Telling them that I am from amongst the Prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must accept the Tawheed. And the second thing, saying that you guys are planning. You guys want to kill me. You guys, you know, you really think that you're big, bad and you're, you're tough. Then you make a plan and you try to conspire against me. And you see today that the one man 
a, a single man with few few people saying to a group a large number of people that you, you think you can do something you see today people will walk on the streets 10 men and when the time comes for them to actually uh, make a claim for them to actually challenge someone their mouths become closed they can't speak because they don't have this power and who the lay salam a very strong man he challenges them all but you guys plan Allah is with me Allah is with me we'll see what you guys can do so with this of course, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turn to Hud alayhi salam. And they say to Hud alayhi salam that we're not going to accept you. No, no matter what you say, we're going to we're gonna turn away from you. And as I've mentioned, the more he called them, the more they run away from Hud alayhi salam. So it's at this point, Hud alayhi salam, he raises his hands towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send something to them, to teach them a lesson. He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a very short dua. Very short though, to, to deal with these people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he sends a drought to these people for a few years. No water. They weren't able to water the flocks. There was nothing growing from the earth. They weren't able to, uh, to drink any water themselves. So with this punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends to them. These people, what do they do? They turn towards their gods. They turn towards the asnam, their statues and their idols. And they begin to make the war to them. They start saying to them, Please send us some water. Please send us some rain. Making the uh, making a prayer to the asnam, until one day it was commanded to Hud alayhi salam, and they didn't even realize at this point that Hud alayhi salam was told to leave that land. Now with the believers he had, he was told to lead, to leave. So it's with this dua that they made they, that they thought at this point a cloud comes into the city. A, a cloud comes into that town, and they look at it and they begin to rejoice. And it's with this same rejoice that Allah subhanahu wa taala crushes them. He crushes them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how they thought that this cloud was a cloud of rain. And then it's mentioned in the Quran al Kareem how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he brought about the winds. He brought about the, the tornado. And it's been narrated that this tornado and these winds, they lasted up from seven day, from eight days and seven nights. This is the strength of the tornado. It lasted this, this, this long. And the people, they started running towards them to their palaces, running towards how high, the high mountains. Such, same, similar you will find Nuh alayhi the son of Nuh. Where did he run to the top of the mountains? You can't, you cannot escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa'alun lima yurid. He does what he wills. If he wants to take your life, he will take your life. So they try to run. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about this. Uh, punishment that they received so much so that the people they were being lifted from the ground Allah were lifted from the ground as though they were balls of wool and they were lifted and not only that when they were flung back onto the ground their heads would hit first so much so that the head would become separate from the body Allah this was the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he sent to the tribe the nation of Hud for rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for challenging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us this sign you talk about this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you talk about the Tawheed, bring us the punishment then. Bring us this punishment. So of course, this was the first, uh, uh, the third prophet which has been mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's just to, uh, understanding the common theme between each prophet. The first being Nuh alayhi salam. What the people, they would call him a madman, you're foolish, you're crazy. All of these things. And then of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends them. And the, the constant bickering where they say that you're a man like us, you're a human like us. The same things that would take place. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again would punish them. Now, from the tribe of, um, uh, from the lineage of Nuh alayhi salam, we know that Sa the Hud alayhi salam comes. And from the tribe, uh, from the Nasal of Hud alayhi salam comes Salih alayhi salam. So all come from Nuh alayhi salam, i.e. the second Adam. And Salih alayhi salam, another prophet, the fourth prophet mentioned in the Quran al Karim, he is now sent to uh, a, a new kaum known as Thamud and this, this come also they were Arabs and they were from the sons of Ad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again blesses them Allah look they've done nothing what did they do to achieve the blessing of Allah what have me and you done today to achieve the blessing of Allah I'm breathing right now you're breathing looking at the screen what have you done what have I done to achieve this mercy from Allah nothing he'll do what he want you know, nothing that you've done that you're deserving of this. Allah will give you something based on Him wanting to give you that thing due to His mercy, due to His karam. Allahu Akbar. So, so uh, Salih alayhi salam, the fourth prophet mentioned in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about how He sends from amongst them, again, a brother from amongst them, Salih alayhi salam, to, this pe to the people. And Salih alayhi salam, He was a young man at this time, so much so that the, the, He was able to speak and influence the people as well. And 
we know that these people they come from the tribe of Ad. Again, large people were given great ability, not uh, uh, similar to to Ad. They were given the ability to carve out within the mountains palaces. No, within mountains, not on top. Inside the mountain, they were making palaces. This is the ability. This is the the advanced technology of the people. And these people, of course, with this, they grew arrogant once again. They grew arrogant. And it was and Salih salam, he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again as a reminder, as a warner to the people that turn away from these things that you're doing. Turn away from these asnam that you are worshipping once again, like the tribes before, leave it. You need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would make claims then that look, the tribe of Thamud which you talk about Saleh and you mentioned to us they were destroyed because their houses were on palaces. Well, unfortunately, uh, their houses were on mountains, their palaces were on mountains. Our palaces, our, house, our houses are inside the rocks or inside the mountains. How can anything destroy rock? <laughs> this is what they were saying. How can anything destroy rock? How can any Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused water to reach above them levels. Your houses will become flooded if Allah wills. If Allah wills, he'll do that. But they were so blind, so arrogant, lost in their own strength, in their own belief that everything came to them. That because simply they were the dominant race. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about how he gave them all of these blessings and mercies. And then Salih alayhi salam, he comes to them and he says, I am a Nabi, I'm a prophet and I've come to you and I'm to tell you the message of Tawheed. And they turn to Salih alayhi salam and they say to Salih, that you're a prophet? We had so many high hopes for you. We had faith in you. Perhaps you were going to be the next leader. And now you come to us with this, uh, with these foolish words of yours. You're a madman. You're foolish. Similar, common theme. Nuh alayhi salam. You're a madman. Hud alayhi salam. You're a madman. Salih alayhi salam. Now he's a madman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. He's a madman. This is the claims of the people. And of course we know the true haqiqah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala crushes them. So they turn to Hud alayhi salam. And they say to him, oh, we were going to give you all of these things. So, he reminds them of Ad and he tells them that, look, you do know what took place with Ad. Your forefathers, who you're saying that you follow because they worshipped idols and so on and so. So what are you guys doing? You need to move away from this. You're going to be destroyed like them. So what they said, they began to mock him. They started to say to Hud alayhi salam, that, you know, if, if what you're saying, that's fine. We accept what you're saying. Okay. But we'll accept under the condition that you bring to us a sign. You bring to us a sign. So... So Salih alayhi salam, he turns and he says to them, you want a sign from God and with this miracle and sign you will accept? And they said, yes, look, we'll accept. So the people gathered and they, one of them said, they looked at Salih and they said, can you see that rock there? We want you to split the rock in half. Another person spoke, not only do you want you to split the rock in half, we want there a camel to come out from this. And another person spoke, not only do we want a camel, we want the camel to be a female camel. And another person spoke, well, what we want is for it to be pregnant. And another person, he begins to speak. You know, people are just putting in input, 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 input. And we want the camel to be a red camel with so much wool. And we want this camel to be able to drink so and so much water. And we want this camel to feed so and so many people with its milk. You know, begin to mock him. Similarly, you know, like if someone says, for example, oh, I went to the gym. And, and I lift it so much, so so and so. And then someone will say to mock him, oh, so you can lift this much as well. And then another person will come and say, oh, you can squat this much and you can do this much, you know, to mock him. They were saying these things to him as if he couldn't do it. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't have the power. They were mocking him, they were joking, saying to him, oh, well, we want it to be like this and like this. You know, saying things from the imagination that they couldn't even picture. They were saying things to Salih, you want a red camel, we want this, we want that. Knowing that, it's just thinking in their heart that this wasn't possible. They were mocking Salih alayhi salam. So Salih alayhi salam, he says, and if I bring this sign to you, will you then accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Look at the conviction of Salih alayhi salam, turns to them saying that if you get this sign that you're talking about, which is nothing for God, you'll accept? Waji, they say, yes, we, we will accept. We will accept him, so, so bring to us. So they set a time, they set a date, and now they stood in front of this rock. They stood in front of this rock. And Salih alayhi salam, he makes a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he causes them that rock to split. And from this rock comes out that she camel that they asked for. Ten months pregnant. Ten months pregnant. And the people, some of them, they accept Salih. He is a Nabi. Others, they reject him. Wallahi, their disbelief increased even more. He's a magician. He's a fool. This was what they were saying about Salih alayhi salam. 
So after seeing this sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Salih alayhi salam, he turns to them and he says to them that, guys, this is from the signs of Allah. This is the she camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not harm it. For if you do, a punishment will befall you. This is what Salih alayhi salam says. He leaves them with that message that, look guys, this is the sign you asked for. Let it plod on, let it do its thing. It'll feed everyone, but don't harm it. So the she camel then starts to live amongst the people. And it's reported that this, this she camel one day would take its turn drinking from the river. And the next day the other camels would drink from the river. And no one would go near this camel. And the people would drink that same day with the camels. But this one camel itself, the she camel from Allah, one day would spend alone at the river. And the next day the townspeople and the camels and their flocks and their camels would go and drink. So it used to be a one day, one day thing. And every day, this camel it was able to feed the entire village. It was able to, with its milk, feed the entire village. And the people more, and the more time it was living with the people, the more people were accepting. And of course, those who disbelieved, the disbelieved increased. And I got to a point that one man he started going around to the others, saying that you know, don't you think this is, you know, really, really irritating? Oh, you guys are knowing. What is this? One day the camel is going by himself. What, what sort of a great big camel is this? You know, what kind of ta'zim is this? One day the camel's going and drinking by itself, and we've got away and bring buckets of water home and drink from that. You know, what, what is this? So that individual he then plots to kill the camel, to get rid of this camel. And then Salih alayhi salam, of course, after this news become widespread, and it's reported that nine people agreed to do this. To this act it was in Salih Salam he hears about this and he tells them warns them again that look I've said to you guys this is a sign from God you can't you could not destroy this coming you cannot kill this coming but they didn't accept they didn't accept that so from their plans as the, the camel of course it comes down from the mountain now it's coming down from the mountain to go to the river and these nine men as they planned they are waiting to ambush and the camel it comes down and it's reported that when the nine people they came, eight of them began, you know, eight of them ran away in fear. They were scared of the sheer size of the camel. But one from amongst them, one of the tyrants from amongst them, he didn't get scared. He didn't get afraid and he struck the camel on the leg. So much so that the camel fell to the ground and they returned and they began to kill the camel. And they killed the camel, not only did they do that, they killed the, they killed the child of that camel. Allahu Akbar. They killed the child of that camel. And it didn't end there. They began to kill it in such a way and slaughter it in such a way that they started to distribute the meat amongst the people. Allah. They started to distribute the meat amongst the people. And Salih alayhi salam, he enters the city, he enters the town and he sees the people. And they come to Salih and they say, Ya Salih, you seen what we've done? <laughs> Would you like some meat? Allahu Akbar. And Salih alayhi salam, he wept. He wept. And then Salih alayhi salam, he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to Salih. Tells them, give them three days. Tell them, you've got three days. And in three days, you will be punished. In three days, you'll be taken from this land. And then they turn to Salih and say, that, okay, that's fine. Bring us this punishment then. Let's see this punishment. So Salih alayhi salam, of course, he is told at that time that you need to leave this place. You need to leave from here. You need to flee from here. Go from here. Take the people who believe and you'll see what we do. So for three days, the people... They, of course, were rejoicing, celebrating. And it's at this point that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes so much so that it's narrated that on the first day, that, and, and even before that, before these people were, uh, it's before Salih alayhi salam, bringing this back again to Surah Buruj, where we began, this is the maqsad of why I've gone through all of these short stories of the prophets. The reason why Salih alayhi salam was told to leave is because then the people, them nine people who had killed the camel started to plot against Salih, saying that tonight we're going to kill Salih. And when we wake up in the morning, we're going to tell people, oh, we don't know what happened to him. We were asleep like you guys. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was the shahid. He was the one who was witnessing. And the mashhood was the kalam of the people. They were speaking to one another. They were talking to one another. Ay, we're going to kill Salih now. And we'll kill him in the morning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs Salih alayhi salam to flee, to leave that place. And Allah will give them the punishment. So then the punishment, it descends upon the people. On the first day, it's mentioned that the faces of the people became yellow. And the people were crying, knowing that something's going on, something's happening. The second day, the faces of the people become red. And they become even more worried, even more uh, in shock. And on the third day, it's reported that the faces of the people become black. 
And then the people, knowing that something is coming, they run to their palaces. How are they run back to their mountains, to their palaces, and Allah crushed them? And it's reported that a huge sound which caused earthquakes then came and destroyed the people of Thamud. Allah destroyed the people of Thamud. And then we take this right back. We take this right back all the way to Surah Barud. Hal ataka hadithul junood ya Nabi. How they reach to you the news of the armies? Fir'auna wa Thamud. In regards to Fir'aun and Thamud, Balilladina kafaru fi takdibin. For indeed they were in a great disbelief, a great denial. Allah min waraihim muhiq. And then we encompassed them from behind. We took them from behind. And we crushed them. Allah Akbar. And this is a message for everyone. For, for all, of, all of the people watching. For myself as well. That in regards to disbelief, in regards to mujarrad, rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the punishment that will befall you. Don't you think for a second that with the armies and the power that we have today and the, the technology and the way we can speak to people from across the globe that we've got power? No, we don't. No whatsoever. Allah will cause a flood if He wanted and He'll crush all of us. And He'll bring about new generations. Just similarly how the entire Qawm of before Nuh at the time of Nuh was destroyed and He brought about a new people. Allah will do that again. So don't for a second think that you're, you're safe. Rather, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Accept the messengers. Follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray your namaz. Give your zakat. And this is the message that I wanted to deliver in regards to the tafsir of Surah Buruj. And not only that, um, the stories of Thamud, the stories of Ad, the stories of the people of Nuh. So these three prophets, you see the correlation. Similarly, how the people rejected them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows everyone to have taken benefit. If I've made any mistakes, I make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He forgives my sins. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.